Hi guys, I'm Rival. Welcome back to the Solid Principle series. Today we're going to be talking about the I in Solid and that's interface segregation. So here's the five Solid Principles once again. Please skip ahead if you don't want to hear this again, but to get it stuck in your head, please go through this with me. So S for single responsibility, O for open close, L for list of substitution, I for interface segregation, and D for dependency inversion. So what is the actual interface segregation principle? So it states a client should not be forced to implement an interface that it does not use. Now this seems pretty self-explanatory. So why should we follow this principle? It prevents methods from being dependent on unnecessary classes. It also prevents classes from having unnecessary methods. Okay guys, so as usual, let's take a look at this principle in action. And since Pokemon Go is going absolutely crazy at the moment, I thought a Pokemon themed example would be absolutely brilliant. So um, let's start off. We have Class Charmander and Class Ash. Class Charmander has Defend, Attack, and Returns Pokeball. Class Ash has a method called I Choose You that accepts a Charmander instance and it sets it as a Pokemon. So we have Pokemon defend, attack, and return to Pokeball. Now this is all good, but we know this is not the best because what happens here if we need to add another Pokemon into the mix? And, you know, we can handle that as, you know, if you've been following, you know, okay, let's code to an interface. So let's take a look about how this will work. Stage two. So I've created a Pokemon interface. This has defend, attack, and return to Pokeball. Okay, so our class Charmander now implements this new interface. And let's just take a look. It has defend, attack, and return to Pokeball. That's great. And now if we look at Ash, it doesn't directly accept a Charmander object, but it accepts a Pokemon interface. And it sets it as a Pokemon and if we take a look, we're going to defend, attack, and return to Pokeball. So that's all good. And now let's take a look at our new Pokemon, Class Metapod. That also implements our new interface. And we have defend, return to Pokeball. Now, if we have to add public function here, my typing is just absolutely terrible. Function and attack. Okay. We know that Metapod doesn't actually attack. It has a defense, right? So it defends using like Harden or uh, Shedding Skin or whatever it does. And um, it doesn't actually attack. But we have a Pokemon interface that is forcing us to use this method attack. And you can see it throws an error. And this is exactly what the interface segregation method actually tries to tell us. It uh, helps us prevent happening. We know we have to code to an interface. That's something we have to do. And um, we don't want to force classes like Metapod to use methods it does not need, like attack. So um, we can examine our Pokemon interface here and think maybe it's something that can be broken down. So if we look at defend, attack, and return to Pokeball. Actually, the more common things in every single Pokemon is defend and return to Pokeball. Not every Pokemon like Metapod can attack. So don't be afraid to break up your interfaces and this is kind of following the single responsibility principle because we want our interface our uh, to serve its you know one purpose and that one purpose will be maybe to define a standard pokemon so let's take a look at how we can change this so um now instead of having just pokemon interface we have pokemon standard interface so we know that every standard Pokemon has defend and return to Pokeball. And now split it up and created another interface. So Pokemon attacker interface. And that has attack because, of course, only certain Pokemon will need that. And now if we look at our Charmander, he will implement Pokemon attacker as well as Pokemon, a Pokemon standard interface. And that's because he needs defend, return to Pokeball, and attack. Now Metapod, on the other hand, will only implement the Pokemon standard interface and that'll have defend and return to Pokeball. Back to Ash. Now he, in his I choose you method, he'll be implementing now the Pokemon standard interface 
And if we just open that up, we have defend, attack, and returns Pokeball. Now, that Pokemon attack method, can we have it there all the time? I don't think so, because what happens instead of passing a Charmander and attacking Pokemon, what if we have something like Metapod? He's not going to be able to attack. And what's going to happen? Our, co our codes can throw an error. And to prevent that, of course, we can have an if statement here to say, well, if it's an instance of something like Metapod, why don't we just uh, then, uh, sorry, if it's an instance of Charmander, then why don't we only allow it to attack? But as we learned before, following the open close principle, that's not what we want to do because that is modifying our class. And what we want to do is keep our class closed for modification, but open for extension. So let's see how we can solve this in stage four. Okay, and the way we can solve it is by just creating another interface. And I've created something called Pokemon Battle Interface. And that interface is just going to have one method and it's going to have battle. If we go back to Ash here, you can see he now chooses to use the Pokemon Battle Interface. That's what it accepts. And it sets it as a Pokemon and we have Pokemon Battle, because if you think about it, the I choose you method, all we want that to do is to make the Pokemon battle. That's it. We don't care how it's going to battle, but we know we just want it to battle. So if we go back here, our standard interface remains the same. Our attacker interface remains the same. And now our Charmander implements the standard, the attacker, as well as our new Pokemon battle interface. So we have our methods of defend, returns Pokeball, and attack, but this time we have battle, which then says, okay, it's going to defend and attack and return to Pokeball. With Metapod, he is not going to implement the attacker because, of course, he's not an attacker. We're then going to open the, uh, the Metapod class here, and we're going to have defend, return to Pokeball, as well as battle, but he's going to battle by only defending and then returning to his Pokeball. So... This is how we solve our problem and this is where code becomes much better and you know our poke our method here choose you it doesn't actually depend on an object itself it it's depending on an implementation of this interface pokemon battle interface so it doesn't depend on the object charmander or the object metapod itself so we can pass multiple uh, pokemon in here as long as it implements the Pokemon battle interface. So why is this good? So why is this principle actually good? And it's because it's preventing coupling. And just take it a step further, let's show you how this actually makes us benefit. Right, so before I explain this, I'm just gonna run this. And we're gonna say PHP, uh, not index, it's gonna be stage dash 5.php and that's not a dot there we go so nothing's happening at the moment that's fine so we have pokemon battle interface as we said you know do battle we have the standard interface up here the attacker interface and <coughs> this is what i want to, i want to explain and this is what you need to understand is like we can have a, a abstract class called pokemon fire type and it has a method of, pun uh, of public function weakness. And you're going to var dump attack decreased here. So Charmander, it can extend Pokemon Fire type because it's a Pokemon Fire type. It's going to inherit those functions. So it's going to inherit weakness. It's then, as we did before, it's going to implement these three interfaces. So we have defend, returns, Pokeball, attack, and battle remains the same except we're just returning the word battle and we just have comments there and class metapod it's going to remain the same okay and ash is going to have i choose you pokemon battle interface and it's going to say return battle right so what's happening here is we have our trainer ash and we have a pokemon metapod but let's change this to charmander Okay, he's going to have I choose you. And if we run this code, we get battle because we're returning battle. So our code works. Now, since we're using Charmander, we're passing 
Charmander into the I choose you method. So technically we should have access to weakness. So if we go down here to I'll choose you and we go Pokemon weakness. Run this again and here we go. So we have string attack decreased. So that's good. We do have our access to our abstract class. Now, what happens if we need to pass in Metapod? Right, we're going to run Met Metapod. Of course, I'm sure you can understand. It's going to say we don't have access to weakness, which is a very good thing. Now, and why this is a very good thing is because the way we coding, if we originally had our I choose you method, depending on certain method uh, on certain objects itself and not the interface, what happens when you're designing or when you're developing is that you're going to have access to stuff that you may not really need access to. So you imagine if this was some massive class with a whole bunch of functions that we didn't really need. Um, why would the I choose you method actually? have access or need to load that. We don't. So with the interface, all we're doing is we're making sure we are implementing, you know, objects of that implement the Pokemon battle interface. So if we change this to Metapod, we don't have access to weakness. And this is the massive advantage here of this principle. And I really hope that using this example helps you understand why we should follow this principle. So thanks for watching guys. Once again, I hope that code example really helps make the idea or the principle click in your head so you can implement it in your code. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Please remember to like and subscribe.